so I wanted to just give a quick overview of what this book is about and how I became interested in this subject. And I will take you back to November of 2012. And I was working at Bloomberg Business Week magazine as a writer. And a news story broke. And a couple of FBI agents from New York had gone down to Boca Raton, Florida. And they had arrested a uh, former portfolio manager who had worked at a hedge fund called SAC Capital. And uh, this was actually, this was quite dramatic. You know, they arrested him, they indicted him, they charged him with uh, what was billed as the largest insider trading scheme possibly ever in US history, uh, $276 million in alleged ill-gotten profits and avoided losses. So a very big case. And um, reading through the indictment the government filed, you could see that they, they were taking pains to sort of draw in the name of this gentleman's former boss, Steve Cohen. And Steve Cohen is someone who I had heard about for years. I started my career as a hedge fund analyst um, doing risk arbitrage, which is analyzing companies that are merging. And uh, when I, back when I started out as a junior hedge fund analyst, Steve Cohen was this legendary figure in the hedge fund world. And he was one of the most successful hedge fund founders of all time. Uh, he was quite uh, secretive, or at least not a lot was known about how he made his money, but he was supposedly this incredible market wizard. And he was, he was revered by a lot of people in the industry. So I had always been aware of this guy. So, so in 2012, Martoma was arrested. And um, in, in the allegations filed against him, uh, he was accused of sort of sharing some illegal information with his former boss, Mr. Cohen, uh, and then the firm traded on this information and the government alleged they made 275, $276 million. So it was a very, very big case. And my editor at the time at Business Week said, you know, you should really look into this. This is a perfect story for you. You're, you know, you're a former hedge fund person. You like big controversial stories. This is going to be big. They're, you know, they're, they're really going after Cohen. This, this other case is just sort of a stepping stone to getting Steve Cohen. You should really get on this. And I didn't really want to. It sounded really difficult. And I kept suggesting other people who would be better equipped to kind of look into this. And I even offered to edit someone else who wanted to write this. It just sounded so hard. But he really he pushed me to do it. So, um, you know, so I started, I started to follow the story. And um, all through 2013, there were just dramatic news events coming out about this. The FBI was uh, clearly investigating SEC Capital. They kept flipping former employees and turning them into informants. There were all sorts of leaks and arrests in the case. Uh, they, they arrested another portfolio manager who was still working there, and it was all quite dramatic. So at some point, the idea came up uh, to possibly write a book. Um, a publishing company contacted me, and that got me thinking about this idea. And I was intrigued because um, it was clearly a really juicy, dramatic story. There were some really interesting characters. It was, it was obviously going to go on for a while and be the kind of thing that could really sustain a book. There would be a real kind of TikTok uh, Moby Dick almost narrative to it. But I thought there were some other uh, larger issues at play as well that I thought were really interesting. For one thing, it would be an opportunity to write about the rise of the hedge fund industry. And uh, not everyone understands what hedge funds are, why that industry is so significant in the market, um, you know, how they started out, how they came to be this two to three trillion dollar industry and just exert enormous influence that most people don't even realize, but they really do have a huge impact on Wall Street and on publicly traded companies and on the whole mindset of American business, I would argue. Uh, so that was a great opportunity. Um, it was also a chance to write about the rise of speculative trading in our economy. Um, hedge funds really in my view, kind of pioneered that to some extent. They showed how successful and profitable that could be, this sort of short-term trading. All the big Wall Street banks uh, have come to kind of imitate the hedge fund trading model in terms of the, how they run their own businesses. And I thought that was really important. I thought there were real important questions about justice in our society and the prosecution of crime and who goes to jail for certain crimes and who doesn't. And there's a lot of controversy about white-collar crime and how we approach uh, wrongdoing by very high level executives. Uh, so this story was clearly going to speak to that. And then finally, you know, there was this very um, 
increasing awareness of income inequality as this defining issue of our time and a real contributor to our political situation and all the polarization we have right now. So, so I thought that this story of Steve Cohen and, and the government's attempt to kind of pursue him and bring him to justice would speak to all of those larger issues. So, so that was really why I decided to write this book. So. I mean, I think the biggest question that it raises is the question of uh, justice and, and whether it is possible to become so wealthy in our society that you are above the law. And people, people might even laugh when I say that because it, in some cases it seems to be obviously true. But I think that is, that is the greatest question that people have raised to me mm -hmm. uh, you know, since the book came up. People have written me dozens of emails and even on the Amazon page there are 175 comments and Many people say, you know, it's not fair the way this story ended. They feel Let frustrated down, right? yeah. towards the system. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the system's a little bit broken. And I think that's reflected in our political sort of deadlock that we're in in Washington. I think it works better for some people than for others. And I think the financial crisis is a good example. A lot of people feel that the way the, um, you know, the financial crimes that were, seem to be, have, clearly have contributed to the crisis uh, were handled by our justice system it was not fair. It was very unsatisfying to the public. And, and essentially um, all of the big banks and mortgage lenders and uh, the ratings agencies, all of these actors who were involved in selling, you know, giving out mortgages they shouldn't have been giving out, packaging those mortgages, uh, putting ratings on them that they didn't deserve, selling them to, to investors. The, then the whole thing blew up. We had a you know, very serious recession. So, so most of those actors were penalized through civil lawsuits and huge fines. Uh, billions of dollars in fines. J.P. Morgan Chase, to take one example, paid billions and billions in fines for various aspects uh, related to this. And there are many legal experts who feel that that does not deter crime. In fact, what happens is the shareholders of the company end up paying the fine, and many of those executives kept their jobs and, in fact, kept all the money they made uh, th through through that whole period. So that that strikes a lot of people as being very unfair. And uh, it was similar with some of these hedge fund cases where, you know, in, in some cases, the largest, the biggest perpetrators or alleged perpetrators, the people who made the most money from a lot of this activity didn't go to jail or even uh, have to go to trial. They just paid fines and dispensed, dispensed with these investigations. And that is what happened with Steve Cohen. So, um, there are people who feel that that is, that is a problem. Mm -hmm. And I think the public was very unsatisfied to see, to see so many people who are responsible for, for this real inequity and widespread mm -hmm. suffering in our economy just sort of write a check and uh, dispense with their problems. Mm 